Okay, so let's dive into this seminar. So really today, I just wanted to, to cover the top four questions that women just like you have asked me about getting in shape, leaner and fitter. Now these are questions I get quite a lot. Um, they're quite common questions and the questions that have been asked recently as well, okay? So I just want to go over this and uh, and dive into it. For you guys that don't know who I am, uh, my name is Ben Hambridge. I help busy women to understand diet and exercise so they can drop fat fast and keep it off as well, okay? Now, I'm going to try and blast through this whole thing because I know you've probably got better things to do than listen to me ramble on. Um, this is the point I'd normally show you a couple of results from the program, um, but today is just about giving you the pure content rather than than be chatting about myself or the results or the program. So if you want to check out the results, just go to bodyfitacademy.co.uk forward slash results and you can see more of the results on the actual program on there. Okay, So I'm going to dive straight into this, straight into the first um, thing that I want to cover because I want to try and get through this in about 20-30 minutes just so I'm not keeping you all night. Um, so the first question is this. Now, I've been asked this a couple of times. What is interval training? And why why do we do it? Because we do it as part of um, pretty much any program that I ever do. And how can you use it to get much faster results if you're not using it already? Obviously, if you're not doing anything, um, any of my programs at the minute. So interval training is basically where you work quite hard for a short period of time and then you drop back off at a low intensity. Okay, so you work quite hard for a short period of time and then you drop back off to either do nothing or something at very, very low intensity. So when you're doing stuff that's kind of non-stop and constant, so say for example if you just go jogging for 40 minutes non-stop or if you go on the cross trainer for 40 minutes non-stop or if you go swimming just for an hour non-stop, if you do an aerobics class where it's just constantly kind of medium intensity all the way through, that's called steady state. Now, it's okay, but it doesn't get as much results or anywhere near as good results as interval training, where you work quite hard for a short period of time and then drop back off, okay? And the reason why is because you get an afterburn, so that basically means that you get more energy burn once you finish that session compared to when you do steady state stuff, okay? So you burn more energy after the session. Um, I'm not going to go massively into the science of it because it's boring, but um, you get something called EPOC, which stands for Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption, okay? Well, that basically means you use more oxygen and you've got to recover after the session, which burns energy. So that's the way that that works. And you can actually burn up to nine times more fat um, after you've finished an interval, an interval session, take the marbles out of my mouth, compared to a steady state session. Okay, so you can burn nine times more energy and more fat once you've done the session. So when you finish the training, you sat at home, you're sleeping, you know, for up to 40 odd hours after the session, you'd be burning more energy. So it's not just about what you do within the session, it's what you do within the session that impacts the stuff you do outside of the session. Okay, so interval training is pretty important um, for getting the best results. Not just fitness, but definitely fat loss. Okay, so I normally try and explain this using a car example. So if you imagine um, when you do um, motorway journeys, your car is going to be quite efficient on fuel. So you're not going to be using as much as if you were driving around town, stopping and starting, stopping and starting. So if you're around town, you're going to go through a lot of fuel. And that's what your body wants to do. Okay, or that's what you want to do with your body for burning the most fat, for getting the better results. So you want to be stopping and starting just like you would kind of driving around town in a car. Okay, obviously it works different with your body, but it's kind of the same the same principle. Um, and the few common mistakes I want to quickly mention about interval training, you can basically do this and um, not get it quite right. Okay, so the big mistakes I see are people firstly not working hard enough in that hard period. And then the opposite mistake as well is people working too hard in the rest or what should be a rest. So you've got to work quite intense for a short period of time and then either work very low intensity or do nothing 
for another bit of time. Okay, so I'll just give you one or two quick examples just to finish this last bit of this interval training section. So instead of going jogging for 40 minutes non-stop, the better way to get the results would be to do a minute hard, just, just as fast as you can, just do as much as you can in a minute, and then do a minute walking or, or just don't go anywhere, just to stand still and rest. Okay, then a minute back hard, and then a minute back on doing nothing. Okay, and you can play around with the times as well. If you're just getting started, you can do like little 30 second bursts and a minute rest. Okay, you can do things like that. If you want to take it a bit more advanced, then you can swap the timing round as well. But that's just to keep it really simple. That's a really easy example. And you can do this with anything. Okay, swimming is another example. Instead of going non stop, plodding up and down the pool, for, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You're going to get much better results by doing one length or two lengths as powerful and as fast as you can um, and then having like a minute rest and then doing that again, rinse and repeat. So it works out that you're actually training for much less time but you get much better results from it. Okay, and it just makes sense. So for an example, doing... Um, 40 minutes of just non-stop medium level work won't be as good as doing um, 20 minutes of interval training which half of that can be resting and half of it working so really you could end up doing 10 minutes worth of actual exercise and get better results than a 40 minute session okay and obviously you're doing that by working and resting working and resting okay I um, hope I've not made that sound too confusing so that's it about the interval training. We'll open up for questions later on. So if you've got any questions, like keep them in your head or write them down if you, if you want to write them down. Um, just so we can cover that in a bit. Okay. So this next part that I want to mention is about getting rid of loose, loose fat and skin on your stomach. Okay. And I've got these two pictures just so you can clearly see the difference because a lot of people are going to get this wrong. Like most people presume that on the stomach they've got, you know, excess skin from losing a lot of weight fast or from losing a lot of weight in general or from a, a pregnancy where they've not managed to get rid of the fat for ages and then by the time they do they've got loose skin there. Um, most of the time it's not actually loose skin, it's still just excess fat that's still there, okay? And the way that you can tell is if you pinch the fat on your stomach and it's, it's like millimetres thick, so like the skin on the back of your hand, like the picture on the left, then that's skin, okay? If you pinch it and it's, and it's thicker, like the one that you can see on the right, then that's body fat, okay? You might be somewhere in between the two, so, you know, you might be, be fairly lean, and it's not quite as, as skin tight as the left one, but it's not quite as big and bulky as the one on the right, then that's still body fat, okay? And the good news is that it's, it's, it's really easy to get rid of that, or should I say it's really simple to get rid of that, not always easier, because obviously sticking to it's the hard part. Um, but yeah, the good news is that it's, it's fat, your skin's just got to shrink back down to um, basically back to normal size once you've got rid of that fat that's underneath there, okay? And the simple solution to that is just by dropping your percentage body fat, just lowering the body fat levels that you've currently got okay and that's just simple um training just to get rid of body fat okay that's the same stuff that i teach um it's just sticking to it a little bit more advanced because the leaner you get the stricter you've got to get as well um and again the way you do that is with the food and with the training okay so you know you'll get a lot of people where they'll say you know if, it, if it's skin you can't get rid of it um, you've got to have surgery, but you know that's not always the case. Yes, it's going to be the case for some people, but it's not always that way. So the first thing I do is do that little test, and then secondly, I just make sure that you get at least below fifteen percent body fat before you even think about um, going down that surgery route. Not that anyone would that's listening in to this, but you know if you are thinking of that then just make sure that, um, you know, you've got rid of that body fat there anyway, okay? Um, so, another thing that I wanted to mention as well, one last thing, is that most people get the body fat wrong as well, 
okay? So you might um, think that you're quite lean, but for an example, a lot of people that might think that 15% body fat might actually be 25 or 30, okay? You might have no clue what your percentage body fat is and that's okay, you don't really need to know. But the main point is you've just got to keep dropping the body fat and that will start to disappear, okay? So make sure you keep drinking plenty of water and just keep pushing, just keep pushing out that zone and just keep progressing with it, all right? So next bit, so this is how to tone and shape your legs and your bum without putting on tons of unwanted muscle. This is a big, big one, okay? Because there's a lot of women uh, pretty scared about packing on the muscle, especially when it comes to either lifting weights or doing any exercise in general or, do any, or doing any type of resistance exercise, okay? So firstly, I just want to cover what toning actually is, okay? What toning is. Um, and toning is basically a combination of a couple of different things because a lot of people will say they want to just tone up, they don't want to lose weight, but it's, it's essentially all the same thing. Well, it's essentially dropping body fat, okay? So toning up is a combination of dropping fat so that you can actually see the muscle so that there's not a layer of fat in between the muscle and obviously your outer skin. So you're shrinking that down which kind of links into that last point that I mentioned. And it's a combination of getting your muscles working to be tighter and firmer. Okay, so it comes from a combination of nutrition to get the body fat down and to get rid of it. And training to actually get the muscles working properly and to get them stronger and tighter and firmer. Okay, so that's what toning is. So somebody that's got you know, a lot of body fat to lose, a lot of weight to lose versus somebody that, that only has like a few pounds of fat they want to get rid of, both of them would basically have the same objective, just losing body fat, okay? And that's that's essentially what it is. <clears throat> but obviously, it's, um, it's much harder for women to put on muscle as well. That's another point that I wanted to mention because, you know, a lot of women... Just, um, try to stay clear of resistance training, the thought of it scares them, they think they're going to turn into an overnight bodybuilder, um, and it's, it's just not going to happen, okay, it's just something that doesn't happen, you've got to lift a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of weight, often you've got to eat a lot, and <clears throat> you've got to um, have high levels of certain hormones like testosterone and things like that, to actually pack on the muscle. So that's where, you know, all the steroids and stuff come in, um, which are obviously not that, not good. It's not um, something you want to do. So the thing that you've got to bear in mind as well is that for women, it's nine times harder to pack muscle on. Okay, that's not me being sexist. It's just the actual difference on the hormone levels. So it's the difference on testosterone levels for men versus women. Okay, so... If it was that easy, then you'd see every like 18-year-old lad just, just massively huge, everybody that goes to the gym, but that's not the case. You've got a lot of people, a lot of lads that train really often and, and lift heavy stuff and still struggle to get anywhere because it is hard to put muscle on. Um, so for women, you know, you've just not got to worry about that, okay? Um, so to actually tone up, like I said before, it's all about dropping the body fat and doing some sort of resistance exercise. So whether that's body weight resistance, so things like press-ups, squats, lunges, stuff like that, or doing things with weights, whether it's dumbbells or barbells um, in the gym. Both of them are, are excellent forms of resistance, and that's the stuff you want to be doing. Okay, You can get a good enough workout with, with, uh, with body weight, and obviously you can progress it from there and do different types of stuff. Okay, So... That's basically how you tone and shape your legs and bum without putting on tons of unwanted muscle. First off, you won't. And second off, you do it with the nutrition and the resistance exercises. Okay? So, I hope that makes sense for the first three. For this fourth one that I want to blast through, it is the exact reason why some exercises can cause weight gain and how to, how to avoid it. Okay, because I hear this all the time. People starting training programs, you know, I've just started out at the gym, um, but I've put on weight. I'm doing the wrong type of training or, 
I hate this type of training. It always makes me put on weight. And to be honest, it's it's something that happens very, very often, especially when you're a certain, you know, when your body's a certain shape. Okay. So first off, I just want to mention that measuring weight is the wrong thing to measure. Okay, it's the wrong thing to track. So if you're looking to get leaner, i.e., you know, get more toned, drop dress sizes you know, basically get a smaller body um, and get rid of any wobbly bits, then your goal is to drop body fat, not to lose weight. And if, if you chase the wrong thing, if you're chasing weight loss, then you're going to do things in a way to get weight loss. And that's not always going to make you have a smaller body. Okay? So that's something that I can go in a lot more detail over, but that's not really in the context of what we're talking about today. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that that is the wrong thing to measure. So your goal is fat loss. I just want you to remember that your goal is fat loss, not weight loss. So if you're doing a certain type of exercise and you do actually put on a little bit of weight, that's not always a bad thing. Okay. Because weight can be made up of anything. It can be, you know, your body weight is made up of skin, bones, organs, blood, water, muscle, fat, it's made up of all sorts of different things. So say for example, if, if you train, your body then actually stores more carbohydrates in your muscles and it stores more water and holds onto it to kind of prepare you a little bit more for the next time you train. So that alone can make you gain weight. So if you're quite lean anyway, um, or even if you're not lean, you know, you, you can get that once you train you can actually put on a little bit of weight because you store more stuff. It won't make you any bigger. So you're not going to add on inches. You're not going to be like a dress size um, or a jean size bigger because of it. So you can actually gain weight while your, your actual frame goes smaller. Okay. And, you know, again, that's something that, that I'm not really going to go massively deep into today. Um, but while we're on that topic, I just wanted to mention that this is... Basically, the four things that I'd use to measure your, your, your progress, okay? The first thing I'd use pictures before and after pictures uh, because pictures don't lie. But if, if you're after a smaller body, that's the thing that you want to track, getting a smaller body. And obviously, pictures are going to help you track that, um, whereas measuring weight won't because, you know, say, say one litre of water is going to weigh 2.2 pounds. So that's going to start messing things up a little bit. So the second thing I'd do is go off how you feel. So if you feel better, then that's obviously the positive. That's another thing that you want to track. You know, if you feel fresher, if you feel like you've got more energy, then that's cool. So the third thing you want to do is go off clothes. So how well your clothes fit, um, like jean size, see if you're actually getting smaller within a certain um, type of clothes fitting. And that's another good way of tracking it because, again, if, you, if your goal is after getting in, in smaller clothes, um, that's the direct thing you want to be measuring. Okay. And the final one is actual circumference me measurements. So using a fabric tape measure, just measure around your hips, your legs, your waist, your chest, even your arms as well. Um, that's my least kind of favorite one, um, purely because you can get error measurement doing it, but... Yeah, that's that's like the fourth one that I'd use. Weight's not even on there. I wouldn't even bother about what you weigh, okay? Now, with all that said, you can actually do certain types of exercises in a certain way that actually makes you gain weight and gain fat, okay? So that's, that's the way that you don't want to do it, okay? And I'm going to explain that now just so you can make sure you can avoid it, okay? Um, so you actually get that when you do a lot of... Um, aerobic type stuff, so like slow, um, low intensity stuff for a long period of time. So kind of like what I was explaining before about the interval training, it was the one that I mentioned about being steady state, that's the one you want to avoid. So say for example, if you go to the gym for two hours and just go non-stop, just, just go at the gym for two hours, um, that's the stuff you want to avoid, okay, and this is why. After around an hour, around 50 minutes to an hour, your body goes from an anabolic state, which basically means muscle building, but like we've already said, you're not going to gain massive amounts of muscle, um, it's just going to tone you up, so that's the zone you want to be in, 
you're going to go from that zone into a catabolic state, which basically means your brake muscle down, it leaves you less toned, and it leaves you with a lower metabolism as well, because muscle is the stuff that burns body fat, so if you've got less of it, you're going to lower your metabolism. Okay, so that's why any sessions that I do, I keep within an hour or less. Okay, so you're going to hear this all the time, like, you probably see this tonight on your news feeds, on like Facebook and stuff, like, People saying, oh, I've just done two classes at the gym back to back. to back. I deserve a pizza. Well, first off, them two classes that you've just done back to back, you've actually took yourself in a zone where you're going to start breaking muscle down. And secondly, that doesn't make you, make you deserve a pizza. Like, it's just crazy. I see this all the time. Um, so you've just got to keep, keep it sensible and keep training smart. It's not about training longer. Or not, it's not even about training harder, it's about training smarter, okay? And that's all you've got to do. Um, so aerobics, all that type of stuff, you want to ditch all that because it takes you in that catabolic state where it breaks muscle down, dropping your metabolism and leaving you less toned as well. Okay, you've seen, you've seen bodies of sprinters and you've seen bodies of marathon runners. Okay, the marathon runners look like you know, untoned skeletons and the the sprinters look like, you know, toned and yes, admittedly admittedly they are quite muscular, but that's because they lift a lot of weight. Sprinters lift a lot, a lot, a lot of weights. Um so yeah, somewhere in between the two that you that I'm guessing you you might be you know, the majority of people might be aiming for. Okay. Uh, more towards the athletic end than the the crazy skeleton end. Um so yeah, that's that's the stuff on the exercise and the weight gain and all that type of stuff. Okay, so keep the keep the training time down, do it with intervals, and get the nutrition right. That's the three main things you want to get. And to be honest, most of the time you can combine the interval and resistance training together anyway. Okay, so as a last quick thing, I just want to mention this before we open up for Q and A. If you, if anyone's got any questions. Um, I know a lot of you that are listening in are already on BFA, Body Fit Academy, but those of you that are listening in that are not on Body Fit Academy, um, just head over to www.bodyfitacademy.co.uk forward slash trial, 